what I know to be true, that by 2030, if not sooner, if you're not in the coaching, training, teaching uh, business, if you're not in the leadership business with your client, that you're just running money and doing financial plans, you're at risk. Where the puck is going, the future of our business, of our profession, is not just in the advice game, but in the implementation, the accountability, the training, the coaching. Hi, this is Coach Joe Lucas, and welcome to the Magellan Network Show. My goal inside of this communication, this show, is to share with you my nearly 30 years of coaching some of the most successful financial advisors in North America. We're going to be talking about strategies, syntaxes, we're going to bring guests on from time to time, and I'm going to share with you what's working now. So think of this show as sort of like a little one-on-one -on -one kind of mini coaching cast, if you like, where we're going to be going in depth from time to time on strategies to help you grow your business, get more effective, become more efficient, find balance in your time management, grow your business, and quite frankly, whatever else is going on in the world today. So before we get to today's episode, I'd love for you to do a couple things for me. Number one, make sure that if you're watching this on YouTube, that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're doing the audio, make sure that you give us a review on whether Spotify or Apple, you know, we'd really appreciate that. And quite frankly, that does help. It does matter when you rate things and like things and subscribe to things, it helps us get the word out to more of the industry. And lastly, I have a very special gift for you. Go to MagellanNetwork.net, so one word, MagellanNetwork.net, and I have for you a complimentary membership, 100% gratis, where you can tap into about between 50 and 75 hours of master classes, forms, tools, templates, and strategies. So please go ahead and uh, make sure you go ahead and get that claim, smash the like button and subscribe, and uh, please go ahead and leave us a review on whatever podcasting platform you're on. And now, let's get to this week's episode. Hi, it's your coach, Joe Lucas, and welcome to this, um, well, it's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty special episode of the Magellan Network show. Uh, first off, I hope you're having a great week and a great start to uh, 2024. And February 15th, 2024 marks the 30th year, my 30th anniversary of coaching advisors. And so what I'm going to do is uh, is dedicate this episode to some distinction. Again, we're not going to pack 30 years of experience into you know 15 or 20 minutes, right? But, but I want to share with you um, two things, uh, some di distinctions that I've learned right over over three plus decades now and also what i see happening over the next several years in terms of what advisors need to be focused on and to uh, quote the uh, great wayne gretzky let's talk about where the puck is going not where it is today and definitely not where it came from yesterday all right so uh, i can go back uh to uh, february 15th 1994. some of you weren't even born yet and uh and I remember stockbrokers. I remember the days of Prudential Base Security and Payne Weber and Kidder Peabody and Morgan Stanley and Solomon Smith Barney and plenty of other firms which no longer exist in their present form. And you know what's interesting back then is success was measured every day because back then it was pretty much a transactional business your advisory skills were not really as needed, uh, not even they're probably one fiftieth of what they are today. You have to be a really good salesperson. You have to have really good phone skills. You have to know how to present, pitch, and close, right? And at the end of the day, at four o'clock Eastern, think about this: at four o'clock Eastern, you knew if you had a successful day or not because you had dropped X amount of tickets, right, which resulted in X amount of commission. And you either, uh, if you're in Lower Manhattan. Uh, you either took a subway, a train, or a bus home, and you you met your family, and you could tell them whether or not you had a great day or not. That's 30 years ago. Well, today, we don't do that anymore. I mean, it, it, there are some that still do it, but it's pretty much obsolete, right? So today, it's a different game, right? It's 
It's not about dropping tickets. It's not about commissions. It's not. For the reality is, you don't know unless you're measuring yourself every day whether you win or lose that day. So the whole concept of our industry went from a very think about this an instant gratification business, right? Instant gratification to now you have to. It takes months, if not quarters, sometimes to reap the economic benefits of taking action. It's an entirely different psychology, and yet I still think there's a lot of this industry that is in what I call a hurry up now mode, and they don't think strategically. They don't think long term. Okay, so I've watched this business more from well, let's call it a research transactional based, which is what it was because that's what all the firms had. Man, they had their well, we have this real proprietary research. We got our analysts. We got all this stuff. We were just on the we were just on a squawk box, and we heard about this company and. And, you know, that was, their, that was the jam, right? Then it morphed over the last, uh, let's say, 10, 15 years, really last 10 or 15 years, to really more of the business of advice and the business of uh, allocation. So let's call it advice slash planning slash asset allocation, right? So we've gone from transactional dropping tickets to fee-based revenue, which is literally like watching paint dry economically for everyone, right? Because both on a million dollars today at 1%, keep the math simple, it really doesn't move your needle. But if you dropped a million dollars of tickets one day, it definitely moved your needle, right? So we just have to understand that we've had this evolution. Now, part of the conversation today is where's the puck going, right? So I can see by 2030, if not sooner, where it's not about planning and advice anymore. It's going to, because I think a lot of that's going to be AI driven, but we're hearing it now. We, we know there are companies that are investing uh, in those type of platforms. So the concept of doing financial planning and asset allocation at some point is going to be is going to get marginalized, right, due to technology. So then if that gets marginalized, well, what happens? Well, the industry is really good at reinventing itself. You know, in my career, let's look at some near death experiences. OK. Y2K market's going to crash. We're all in business. Then we had the tech crash. Right. Actually, no, we had. Uh, yeah. Then we had the tech or one or the other. And then what do we have? Oh man, we have the discount brokers, then Schwab and E-Trade and those, and those people, man, they're gonna crush us, right? Then what was it a couple of years ago, right? Oh, it's RoboAdvisor, right? Oh, that's gonna kill the business, right? Then what else we heard? Oh man, you know, DOL, Best BI, Best Interest, all this stuff. And yet the industry still flourishes and yet the industry still has lots of smart money investing in it, right? Why? We are an industry slash profession of resilient people who are willing to, in essence, reinvent themselves when the situation requires it. There are some of you that watch this channel or listen to my podcast who've been in this business as long as I have, some of you longer, and you know what a ticket was, right? And now you're not doing tickets at all. Look at the evolution you've had, right? So now what does that mean going forward? So I predict, and I'm certain of this, and I don't go on record very often saying, here's what, here's what I know to be true. But I'm going to say, since it's my 30th anniversary, and I'm, we're going to have some fun with this episode. What I know to be true, that by 2030, if not sooner, if you're not in the coaching, training, teaching uh, business, if you're not in the leadership business with your client, that you're just running money and doing financial plans, you're at risk. Where the puck is going, the future of our business, of our profession, is not just in the advice game, but in the implementation, the accountability, the training, the coaching, it's going to look very much like a hybrid coaching model. The economic model will be different, obviously, but it's going to look more like your business is going to look more like mine for sure. Right. And we're starting to see that. Right. We're starting. I'm starting to have early clients of mine who are early adopters and we're creating very interesting conversations with prospects uh, with, a, with a totally different offer. And it's fascinating to watch how that part of the marketplace has been slowly underserved. Right. And we and maybe I'll uh, dedicate an episode in the future to a little bit more details around that. But here's what I'm saying to you right now. If you if you have the identity, hey, I'm a really good financial advisor, planner, you know, we do a great job with running money. That that identity has to shift over the next several years. And the sooner you shift it, the better off you're going to be the advantage you're going to have early adopting in this industry. If you think about it really leads to a profound competitive advantage. Think about this. How about the advisors back, and I know some of these people, some of the early advisors in the early 90s, 
decide to do dinner dinner seminars, right? There was successful money management. Uh, that was one of the leaders back then. And, you know, I mean, advisors built empires on that model, right? And then all of a sudden, five, 10 years later, everybody's doing seminars. It kind of gets saturated, right? And then everybody quits. And then now it kind of comes back a little bit because uh, a lot of people left doing that part of the business. How about if you adapted early into social media, right? You got into uh, LinkedIn and Facebook early, right? And you and not just early, but with a, with a plan, right? You have a competitive advantage there. And how about now? Imagine uh, if you were one of the first people or the, the top, first 10 advisors in like using a service like Smart Asset or Agora, one of those, right? Like early adapters, right? Like you, you have the market to yourself basically at a very low cost for a long period of time. Fast forward now. Think about becoming one of the first advisors to really understand a coaching model around your clients, really attracting their friends and family to come work with you because it's about building your own tribe, your own online community. See, that's what I'm going to devote the rest of my career to doing. I'm not abandoning coaching advisors, but I'm going to, I already have created, by the way, we're going to start really working on teaching advisors how to coach their clients and have them build online communities, which will be just massive referral engines for them. It's something we're already beta testing. I'm not gonna get into details because we're in stealth mode right now, but it's um, by 2030, it's gonna be dynamic and I'm so excited for the future. So if I think about, you know, somebody asked me this recently, because I haven't updated it in a long time. You know, how many coaching sessions have I done in my career? I think we stopped counting at like a 65 or 70,000. So I, I'm going to say we're probably in the 80,000-ish, maybe 90 by now. I mean, I, I just stopped. It, it became irrelevant, quite frankly, to do that. But, but here's what I know. Advisors are their, wor their own worst enemies, by far. Uh, I've seen many careers. Um, I wouldn't say ruined, because it's really hard to do that in this game. You have to be really dysfunctional. But I've seen many a career unfulfilled because of just head trash, thinking and focusing on the wrong things, not understanding the business you're really in. And it's sad. And, you know, there's a lot of times, and, you know, I'll get into it here a little bit. You know, I've seen, I've seen people overvalue the educational, and I'm all for education. So go get your CFP, go, go get your master's. Like, go, I'm not saying don't go do those things. But don't be under the illusion or maybe the, the, the delusion that, oh man, if I just get really smart with MBA, CFA, CFP, you know, SEMA, CHFC, all that, yeah. In other words, I'm going to acronym myself to death. That that's just going to, that's going to be a massive advantage over that. Here's the reality in the marketplace. Most people don't know what they mean. They just don't, right? Now, if you want it from an educational standpoint, because that's going to give you more capabilities, I'm all in on that. But it's not enough. This is the people business. A hundred years from now, we may not be. But in our lifetimes, for pretty much everybody here, it will be the people business. So like when I have a client who has a child, adult, hey, my, my son, my daughter is going to go to college. They want to go come in this business. You know, they're thinking about it. What should they study? And here's what I normally hear. Hey, they're going to study finance and economics. Two totally useless majors. Totally useless, right? Psychology and business. You know what? Learn how to be an entrepreneur. Anything that has to do with entrepreneurial studies, do it. Anything that has to do with psychology, do it. Because those are the two things that really matter in our game. Understanding you and understanding human beings and understanding you're an entrepreneur. That's it. All the other stuff, it's, there's software for that. There just is, right? So, but some of you still hang your hat on the good old days, you know, and, and you got to remember this. So the other thing that advisors get hung up on is they live in the past. Well, this is the way we used to do things or the good old days. I remember complying, like who cares? Like if you're not a hundred percent future focused, you're at a disadvantage. You just are. I mean, the best years of our industry are in front of us, not behind us. There's, I know some people want to tell you they are, or, oh man, you better take advantage of this. Like, no. Because this industry is so resilient, so adaptable, I ain't not worried about that. Like, we'll, we'll, whatever the business condition is, we'll have a business model for it. That I'm 100% sure of, right? 
I remember there was a time that they were thinking about like almost outlawing annuities, right? Yeah, if we look today, uh, how much annuity business is written in, in the industry, it's at all time high. So guess what? Hi, Coach Joe Lucas here, and I'm just breaking here for a moment just to do a couple quick reminders. Number one, uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel or our podcast. In addition, please leave a, a comment or a review. Those things really, really matter. And uh, share this episode with three of your colleagues inside the financial services space. And lastly, make sure that you go ahead and claim your free membership inside of Magellan Network. Now back to this week's episode. Not happening. Fee compression. Oh, Joe, you know, we're going to get down to it. I haven't seen it. Now, where I think you will see it is if you're purely a money manager slash asset manager, I do think you have some risk going forward. I just do, uh, just because of the nature of, of what you're doing. But if you're really knee deep in the, in the people business and your clients and really understanding them and adding value, not just to them, but multi-general relationally, which we'll talk about in a moment, another massive blind spot, by the way, um, I think you'll thrive in the next five to 10 years. I think by 2030, which is where I'm putting my thing, so six years out, you know, I really think that those of you who really get involved with understanding humans and people and have a coaching concept and a teaching training concept, you have a massive advantage over everybody else. So let's talk about the other blind spot that I just mentioned. I've been hearing this for 30 years. Oh, multi-generational. we got a multi-generational. Our clients are adult children, right? The industry, by and large, has done a terrible job with that. Um, I think because uh, most advisors are distracted right? Instead of worrying what's on uh, CNBC or Fox Biz or whatever, maybe you should be talking to their, their, your clients about their children. Wouldn't that be a better use of time, right? So I think the other piece, so the piece here is when do most advisors think about next gens? And I'm going to say a term, don't get caught up in it. You know when they think about next gens or the adult children of their clients? When one of their clients, and I say this with respect, is in a box in a room with flowers around it. That's when they start thinking about it, right? Which is the worst time. Think about it. They're, they're, bear, you know, the children are bearing mom or dad, and now we're going to worry about, you know, uh, uh, we're going to worry about wealth transfer, right? Like in, in a very emotional time, it's terrible. Yet that's when advisors think about it. There's a massive opportunity for most of you, 95 percent, to really have focus on the next gen. Like do it, right? And then somebody say, "Well, Joe, let's see how do you do it." Maybe I'll dedicate an episode. I've got clients that are 50, 60, 70% uh, multi-generational in their households, okay? It's not rock, look, anything I ever talk about here is not rocket science. I don't, I'm not gonna create a training program for 10 or $20,000 to, to teach you guys how to go talk to the adult children of your, it's not that complicated, right? By the way, neither is referral gathering, neither is this, right? So one of the other things I think I've learned uh, let me rephrase that. I know I've learned in 30 years. The industry buys a lot of silver bullets. Oh, I need a system for this, a system for that. You know, I need a biz, I need a social media system. I need a COI system. I need a referral system. And it just so happen that the industry has a lot of coaches and consultants are happy to take your ten dollars to $25,000 of capital to teach you things that you probably already know, right? So, and, and is that sounds a little shade on some people? You know what, after 30 years, I wanna say what I wanna say, right? Just because you learn something does not guarantee you'll implement or execute it. So here's the thing. You have two choices. Learn a lot and execute a little, or learn something and execute a lot. I will tell you the second one will trump the first one 100% of the time. I've seen advisors get so, well, Joe, I gotta really learn this script, or I really wanna master this, or I really wanna get my arms around it. And you know, six months later, they're still trying to hug the damn thing. Like, no, man, go do this, right? Nothing will beat repetition, reps, right? If you wanna get good at public speaking, you go public speak. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't take a course, but that's not gonna solve your problem. That, to me, and I, I tell the story all the time, like, you can go to training, Joe, I want to get training on, to, uh, on how to get referrals from my clients. Great. I want to get trainings on COIs. Great. I want to get training on what our phone skill, whatever it is, right? Great. That's like going to the driving range if you play golf. I'm going to go hit a couple bucket balls. And man, by the, by the second bucket, man, I'm grooved, right? Then you take it out on the golf course and you shank the crap out of everything. Why? 
because that is not how the game is played. You need to get the reps in on the course. Same thing here. You want to get good referrals? Start talking to your clients about referrals. You want to get good at COIs? Start talking to COIs. It's, again, it's taking action. My early mentor, Tony Robbins, I never forget the, sta the statement he made. Massive action cures all slumps. So if you're in a slump, if you don't feel like you have momentum, well, let's not think a little bit more about it, right? Let's go do something about it, right? Go, here's the deal. I challenged somebody with this not too long ago. And yes, I'm a little ranty right now, but you know what? My 30 year, I'm gonna I'll take a little creative license with this episode. So I was talking to a, a Magellan Network member and uh, and he was like, you know, hey, I'm off to a slow start. Da, da, da. And, and you know, I could see like, it's the woe is me kind of, you know, head trash conversation. And, and I said to him, I said, okay, man, so let's, how many clients do you have? Uh, 175. Okay. How many uh, connections on LinkedIn? Two, 3,000. Fine. Right? Uh, so I kind of took inventory of all his possibilities. I said, okay, so let me ask you a question. Have you mentioned that you're here as a resource for anybody that they know to 175 families? No. Okay. That's stop, step number one. Step number two, do all 175 have, have a balance sheet or a financial plan? No. Great. Next move, optimization, right? Next. Do you know who their CPA and attorneys are for all 175? No. Okay, next step. Okay, then we're going to go reach out to the 175 CPAs and attorneys and just see if there's a, if there's a basis for a relationship. And I'm going to take a real detour quick. So one of my personal clients, and he'll he'll see this, and he'll know I'm talking about him. But we're not putting names. I love him. He's a great guy. Just typical advisor, just can't get out of his own way sometimes, right? And I remember last year, we were having a conversation about COIs. And like I said, there are coaches and consultants will will sell you sophisticated um, programs for 10, 20 grand, 30 grand, whatever. And like, you, if you want to do that, it's fine. I'm not saying not to do it, but you don't need to do that. And uh, so he said to me, he goes, yeah, I, my, uh, I've never had any luck with CPAs. And he was very specific about CPAs. And I said, well, so tell me what you've done. And, and this guy's been in business probably, I bet you he's been in business as long as I've been in doing what I do. It's about 30 years. He goes, well, I met with like five or six of them, and I got one or two to send me a client here or there, but I never really got any traction with it. And then I go, okay, man, so in the last five years, how much time, energy, and effort have you put to, to this? Zero. Well, dude, I mean, it's like it's like my plants die. Well, are you watering them? Are you for like, no, well, of course they're going to die, right? You need attention. So this is what most advisors do, by the way. They go meet with a couple of CPAs or attorneys, they have good you know, breakfast, lunch, whatever, they have, good, they have really good conversations, little chit chats here and there. And then nothing happens. And they go, well, that didn't work, right? And here's what I told them. I said, look, man, you got 175 clients. Actually, not to go back. In his case, he's got several hundred. Um, I said, I know you probably have about 200 CPAs or EAs in your, in your game. Here's what I need you to do. Over the next two years, we're going to reach out to all 200. And we're just going to see... Uh, you know, if they drink in our Kool-Aid, if there's rapport, if there's a basis for a conversation. And out of the 200, there may be 50 that, you know, we can deal with a little bit. And then out of the 50, there'll probably be about five that we can really, really build these really powerful and profitable and economically rewarding deep relationships with, right? But here's the deal, man. You got to go have 200 conversations. You, let's go do it, right? And I think that's one of the things advisors don't get. It's everything in this game is a ratio. It just is. So, you know, if you if you want to, you know, somebody said, "Well, I want the, you know, I want to make sure I got the perfect approach to a CPA." Doesn't exist. You know what the perfect approach is? Approach them. Take the action. Don't worry about it. You're not going to screw it up. There's plenty of them, right? And and this is what I mean. Like we're so we're so failure adverse in the industry that we're not allowing ourselves to be successful. Like somehow we think because we're professionals, right? That if we do something and it doesn't work that uh, we, we may be stupid or dumb or we don't want to face that and I'm telling you right now you want to go and build an empire you want to go and be great in this game go fail as fast and massively as you can because you're gonna fail and, and and I'll give you like a great example let's just say for example let's say you're either doing digital marketing or you're doing LinkedIn or you're doing seminar we're doing business development do you realize that any business development is probably 98% failure and 2% success? Think about this. 
if you were going to do a seminar and you hire one of those uh, seminar companies, right? And we're not going to get into names. And you know, they send out. Let's say they, whether on Facebook or direct mail, X amount of invitations go out. Well, what percentage of those invitations do people register for your event? One percent. So, in other words, ninety-nine percent of people said no, thank you, right? Not interested, right? So you have a ninety-nine percent failure rate. One percent people show up, right? Then out of the one percent people that show up, how many people then ask to have a conversation with you? A third to a half. Okay, so now what's our failure rate, right? And then how many of those you really convert to a client, right? It's like one tenth of one percent. Total failure. Yet people build multi, multi, multi million dollar empires on that model, right? LinkedIn. Does everybody you connect with on LinkedIn become a client? No, it's probably about one, probably ten, probably ten basis points, right? But why you spend all the time on there? It's still failure rate, right? Every time, and I can tell you this from data. A typical advisor who has an introduction conversation with a client, so they remind the client that, hey, well, here's a resource for you know, friends, family, colleagues, and coworkers. You're going you're gonna to get nothing back nine out of ten times. 90% failure rate. Okay? And on and on and on and on. You go, if, if you're doing one of those uh, lead gen programs uh, you know, online, and we're, again, we're not going to get to names here, they're failure based. They're failure based, right? But because we're so caught up in that, see, COIs. You will fail with 95% of COIs you talk to. 95%. But how many do you really need? Three, four, five? Go fail 200 times. You'll have your five. Done. Don't overthink it. Right? Massive action. But again, we get caught up in the um, in the intellectual game. And we forget that this, the results are about action. Taking action. Doing things. Moving the needle. Really, really important. A couple last thoughts. This is a personal and people development game. It just is. So if you're not investing, you know, a minimum of 10% of your top line revenue in you, you're not make you're not doing enough. And I'm not doing this because I want you to call, hire Joe Lucas from Magellan Network. Hey, there are plenty of great coaches. There are plenty, you know, great uh, training programs. But here's the thing. You know, I'm here after 30 years of doing what I do. I'm here getting coached in a training and coaching mastermind in California, on my anniversary, I'm not out celebrating, I'm learning. After 30 years, I still, it's still one of the most important things I do for myself, is always reinvest back in myself. So, last thing, and then we're gonna bounce out of here. Somebody asked me in an interview once, what is the greatest challenge advisors have with really creating a fulfilling, business and life and economic abundance and and really contributing you know to to their family success and to their client success and you know just overall you know the uh the uh being successful and the uh art of fulfillment right what what really gets in the way of that and most of the times you'll hear things like well economic conditions or compliance or the firm or the markets or or whatever and you know those are not reasons those are excuses here are the two reasons. After 30 years, I distilled it down to only two. Advisors must be able to check their ego and put away their arrogance to become better. You've got to surrender. In my coaching career, I had this. Where I thought I knew it all, I figured it out, and I lost a decade of my game. Those of you around me know this. When I surrendered and realized I didn't know it all, when I put my ego away, and there's a saying, uh, your ego is not your amigo. It's a true story, true statement. If you check your ego and check your arrogance and become coachable and adapt and learn and realize there's so much more you need to learn and do and, and understand and create, all things are possible. And then the last thing I'd say, then we're gonna get out of here. Be future focused. Don't live in the present. Don't look at the past. Not going to help you. You know, one of the things I did two years ago is I declared myself I'd be 100% future focused. Past doesn't matter. Look, I'm doing this 30 years, and I'm going to do it at a high level for another 20. You know, I'm, I'm here after 30 years. I'm here learning, investing in myself, investing in my capabilities, my competence. Why? Because it's about the future, not the past. 
So I just want to say this in closing. Thank you for giving me the privilege, the opportunity to share, to come into your lives uh, once a week and, and you know, offer you some little, hopefully, tidbits of wisdom and, and some ideas, some, maybe a different way of thinking about things uh, that will help you and your family. And uh, I look forward to the next 30 years. So thank you all for watching and listening uh, to this little crazy episode of Magellan Network Show. And uh, just remember, MagellanNetwork.net. And uh, see you all again next week. Thank you for watching or listening to this episode of the Magellan Network Show. Hey, if any of this resonated with you, I invite you to come to MagellanNetwork.net and we have a powerful group coaching community of like-minded advisors. Come in for a trial. You and I will have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Let's see if I can help elevate your game both personally and professionally.